Hello, I'm Forrester, and welcome to the sixth video in my Kerbal Space Program series, No Kerbals Died, the hard mode career where I look to keep our adorable green astronauts alive throughout. This time around, we'll be landing on the moon with a rendezvous in space. Starting with the first rocket, the X-8 lander carries science and four landing legs, and of course, for safety, the launch escape system atop. So, as I mentioned, this is the first of two launches today. So this is a rudimentary lunar lander, and the second launch will be a transfer vehicle for getting it to the moon. Once again, I'm walking through the setup just to make sure that we've got extra safety. Uh, as there is a Kerbal on board, I just add a launch escape system just to the top, just in case of any emergencies. So here we go to the last few seconds before liftoff. And there we have liftoff. I have sped up the footage this time around simply because we have got two flights to get through. And with a full lunar mission with a rendezvous in between, that's quite a lot of footage. So I have just sped things up a little. As we fire off into the atmosphere, notice the lifter for this is very, very straightforward. There's no need for solid rocket boosters. Just the basic lifter rocket does just fine. And there we have main engine cutoff. So the lowest stage here is just a poodle engine with a fuel tank equipped, but because the lander is so light, there's really not much for it to be doing. The other thing you'll notice is there's no fairings on this rocket, which is why when I try to lose just the launch escape system, I end up doing a bit of a flip. No fairings because I don't have fairings big enough. Um, also, this kind of rocket doesn't really need it. I have way too much Delta V on this rocket, so absolutely fine. And there we have second engine cut off and just circularize the orbit. So all I do now that the lunar module is in orbit is just skip around to the other side of the planet. and prepare to launch the transfer vehicle. So for the transfer vehicle, I'm building what is essentially a command pod with some fuel on the top. This will need a bit of a heavier lifter. So I have got a, a full solid rocket boosting lifting motor underneath. And lift off. So the reason I needed a heavier lift of this is actually this carries the bulk of the fuel and is responsible for the transfer to the moon. So those solid rocket boosters are actually providing quite a lot of delta V. And I'm breaking a little bit of what I usually do as we get to a solid rocket boost separation there. In that usually I keep the speed down um, so that I can keep control. Actually in this case I'm just interested in getting some altitude as quickly as possible just so that I've got no issues with aerodynamics as I jettison the launch escape system. So again, just because I've got no fairings or anything like that on the rocket, aerodynamics can come into play. So by doing these maneuvers a little bit higher up, I'm not precious about Delta V because I've got two launches here for a single rocket. And as we push through for apoaps, it did go through and jettison the lower stage. So we had main engine cut off. And we're now in the second stage that's just boosting this transfer command vehicle up to orbit. And there we have second engine cutoff. So we're on the final stage for both rockets now. And just tweaking the intercept for the rendezvous. Now I have got both of these with plenty of Delta V, actually far more fuel in them than is strictly necessary for this mission but again in the interest of Kerbal safety that felt like the right thing to do. So unfortunately here making the rendezvous in the dark so there's not a great view as join up the command pod with the lunar module. And with them joined up plan for the moon intercept. So this is the long burn, this is the real uh, Delta V suction burn uh, where most of our power goes into as we get towards the moon. But it's actually the first burn that I'm doing where I've got so many Kerbals making the journey. 
So we have got three Kerbals in this vehicle. I've just spun around and done a second go at it just because actually the craft has got so much mass that trying to do all of that burn with just a single poodle engine in one go was a bit too much. So there we've got our encounter. And we start our deorbit burn so that we actually get into orbit around the moon. Now I am being a little bit wary of electric charge here. The simple reason that the Poodle engines, uh, not the Poodle engines, the Terrier engines don't have any alternators on them. So the electricity that I launch with is the electricity that I've got for this whole trip. I've got a little bit of RCS to help, but um, I've been very, very cautious. And they're just getting some of the science in the orbit of the moon before I undocked and deorbit the lunar module. So for the actual Apollo program, they use a single launch vehicle with the command pod and the lunar module both launched together. Uh, I've not done that this time around in, in this playthrough. I have done it in some of my others. Uh, but the reason I've not done it this time around is simply because of the weight and power limits in career mode. Um, plus, of course, I had a contract to rendezvous two spacecraft in orbit of Kerbin. Uh, so I was able to, to kill two birds with one stone with this mission. And here, just using that little Terrier engine just to keep the speed under control and control the descent down to the moon. That last 200 meters. Feels tense. <laughs> See, I'm being very, very cautious because it's quite a tall lander and I don't want to flip it. And there we are, landed on the surface of the moon. So the other contract that I've got here is actually to get science back from the surface of the moon. So that will fund this entire mission, as well as bring some valuable science points back for research. And the final mission I've got on here is to plant a flag on the moon's surface. So I'll go ahead and plant that flag. I do find it quite handy when I'm planting the flags just to name the biome that I'm in, just in case I need to visit a certain biome for the future. And there we have it, our first lunar landing. So herein we're launching, so taking off. And because there's no atmosphere here at all, I can get quite quickly into the horizontal plane for rejoining with the command vehicle. You'll notice as well that actually because I have got three Kerbals on this mission, one in the lander and two in the command pod, I am going to land all of the vehicles separately. So the command pod has got a heat shield underneath, so does the lunar module. So I'll be able to land them both and that will also uh, complete the world first milestone for me for returning a vehicle from the surface of the moon. So at this point, just because there's a little bit more electricity on it, I've switched across to the command pod just to use that to rendezvous and dock rather than use up the last of the electricity that I've got in the lunar module. Because I have to land the command pod and the pod from the lunar module, I just want to make sure I'm not using all that electricity at this phase of the mission. Being very, very ginger with the RCS fuel here as well. And as they just kiss together, there we have docking and capture. So, this time, getting my uh, engine sorted. So I'm going to just transfer all of the science out from the uh, science portion of the lander and just put that into the command pod. And then just swapping around my engines, just so I've got most efficient use of all of that delta V. There's the escape from the moon. And then we reduce the periapsis just down to just above the atmosphere. And then I'll use the last of the fuel just to reduce that apoapsis down so that my uh, re-entry speed is as low as possible. Again, just for interest of safety, to reduce the pressure on those heat shields. 
So this is quite rare for me in that I'm actually bringing the lander back to the surface. Usually I'll either leave the lander in the orbit of the moon and they're just undocking and jettisoning for third engine cutoff as I re-enter. But yes, as I say, usually I would leave the lunar module in orbit of the moon so that I can reuse it. Or I might just deorbit it and crash it into the surface so that it's not there as extra space. So for me, quite unusual that I had to bring the extra Delta V to actually bring the lunar module home. And they're a nice re-entry angle. So parachutes deploy safely. And we land for a nice safe touchdown. Those missions are complete, so all that remains is to bring our final Kerbal home. So just burn off the last that fuel deorbiting. Third engine cut off for the lunar module. And then once again a very similar re-entry angle, nice and safe as we re-enter through. So as the sixth episode finishes, please continue to like subscribe to the channel if you aren't already and get involved by giving me encouragement or otherwise in the comments i happily leave you with the ubiquitous closing remark for every mission in this series no kerbals were harmed in the making of this video